guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm super super excited for what i'm starting i'm going to be doing a true crime slash story time like episodes so some story times might be like my real life just telling you stories of times other ones might be like murder mysteries oh my god if you know me i literally live on watching murders prisons gangs documentaries anything like that so when i saw that this is actually a thing i like oh my god let's start however uh, my first one i'm probably going in with quite a graphic one for my first ever one because why not jump straight in there so i do want to give a disclaimer because it is very graphic so ideally this is intended for adults as i'm going to be going in depth with crime scenes um and it's very gruesome let me just tell you that like gruesome um also i just want to say that there's no disrespect shown to anyone who is actually involved in this actual case um, no disrespect whatsoever and all the information that i'm going to go over is what i've just found scouring the internet because i've done lots of research on this so it is the hello kitty case so let's just jump in okay so it all started back in may of 1999 in hong kong when a 14 year old girl went into the local police station saying she's been haunted. So obviously the police were a bit like, we don't deal with paranormal activity, that's nothing to do with those, um, until the girl started going into a bit more depth. She then said she's been haunted by the girl that she helped to kill the year before. So the police were a bit like, all oh, right, we might look into this then. So as it turns out, she sat down and she gave him a story about how her and three others helped to kill this lady. So, going back right from the beginning, the year before, it all started when it's a girl called, you have to excuse me because I'm looking on my map book because I'm not as good as all the other crime stories just yet. So the girl that was murdered was called Fan Man Yi. A bit of backstory on Fan Man Yi is that when she was born her parents gave her up we don't know why her parents gave up if they had a choice or whatever but her parents gave her up so throughout growing up into being 16 she was in and out of homes um orphanages girls homes things like that so she didn't have the best start in life which then resulted in turning to drugs so she left at 16 and she ended up on drugs which I then believe ended up on prostitution. So I think it was the, around the age of 22, 23, when she got a, a job hosting a nightclub. Now, we'd think, or I'd think, hosting nightclubs, maybe like looking after a table, seeing to them personally, giving them their drink. However, I think it was more of a sexualised job, shall we just say. Um, she also had a child at this age as well. Um, so still heavily on drugs and doing a hostess prostitution job. She then came across Chan Man Lok. So he is in a gang called Triad. Triad, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but apparently it's a big well-known Chinese gang. He's part of this gang who came often to see Fran. Um, like he'd go there just to see her and just to have her services, shall we say. Um, he also is part of the triad gang but he's also a pimp and he's a drug dealer and he's just a big time gangster idiot if you ask me so they got built up this relationship he'd go it'd be convenient for him and she'd be getting money to go feed a habit and that just kind of happened however this one particular time she stole his wallet so his wallet had four thousand dollars in which is equivalent um in england to 400 pounds and she stole his wallet now there's a few different stories because i've like literally researched loads of this some stories say she felt guilty so she told him um other stories say he found out because it was just him and her in this room either way he found out he then said she needs to pay the $4,000 back along with $10,000 interest. Um, somehow she managed to get the money together. She paid him the $4,000 and the $10,000 back interest. But then said I want another sixteen dollars back on top of the $4,000 and the $10,000 which she just could not pay back whatsoever. He then hired two of his henchmen who were called Lung Xing. Cho and Lung Wai Lun. I do apologise if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Um, so yeah, two of his henchmen to drug her and kidnap her. 
Um, so they did, they went ahead and apparently it's something called ice. That's what they drug her with. I believe it's some form of crystal meth, but I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, so they drugged her, they kidnapped her and they took her to this apartment. The main guy, Man Lock, said, if you can't afford to pay me the additional 16,000, then you will earn it back. In other words, we will bring men in and you will do services till we get our money back. And that is how it started, how everything started. So this is where her four whole weeks lengthy torch started. This is also where the case gets its name Hello Kitty from because apparently this apartment, I'll insert a few pictures, was just Hello Kitty everything. Curtains, kitchenware, toys, cushions, everything was just Hello Kitty, which I find bizarre for a triad gang member but whatever so that is where hello kitty gets its name from so this poor girl fran is being held hostage in this little scruffy dingy apartment and being made to earn sixteen thousand dollars back however for what reason they thought we're not going to bother prostituting her to get his money back we're just going to use it as this is horrible but like a punch bag um they raped her, they tortured her for four weeks from then on. Now, I just want to give another warning. I know I've done a disclaimer, but I'm about to go through some of the tortures, what happened, and this will not be for everyone because it is absolutely disgusting what this girl endured. So, like I say, it were normal beatings, kickings, punchings, rape. Um, it's said as well that the men were in the next door, just playing the PlayStation, and every so often they'd just come in and beat her again. They'd hang her from the ceilings and tie her arms to the ceilings so they could, like, beat her differently. They used to put cigarettes out on her. Apparently they'd burn the bottom of her feet so she couldn't walk. They melted plastic all on her so it burnt, so it dripped on her and burnt. They would force her to eat and drink human waste. They'd urinate in her mouth. Um, also, so remember the girl at the very start who went into the police station, the 14 year old girl, well back then when she was 13 she and she was here, she was actually involved because the main guy, Manlock, is her boyfriend. So Manlock is 34 I believe and he is her boyfriend and she's 13. So I think that kind of says says everything i mean we know what kind of people they are anyway so this is how the 13 year old girl was involved in it all she was his girlfriend so she actually came forth as well and said i did take part she said i did kick her i did punch her our phone also admitted to police that when fran had the wounds on her from melting plastic and the beatings that she actually went over and poured chili oil inside the cuts and bruises just to give her excruciating pain and she actually admitted this to the police it also says that while Fran was tied to the ceiling with electrical wires that they used to beat her often with metal bars and they used furniture as well I didn't really want to look in too deep as to what they were doing with that but they were beating her and doing things with furniture and metal pearls to her as well then after four long weeks they found Fran's body in the bathtub and she was dead she probably died from her injuries that she endured throughout the four weeks before however the men the three men did say that she overdosed on herself and that's how she ended up there so then what happened is just it gets even worse they then took a saw to her body in the bath and started to saw off all her limbs and this was so they could get rid of them in different ways one of the ways that they did it is they actually cooked cooked her body um, to stop it from decomposing so it wouldn't start and begin to smell. Um, and apparently this is, I don't know what this is about, but it says they were cooking it and they were using the same spoons for their food. Another story is that they cooked the body parts and they made it into soup and gave it to the homeless. Um, there's a few different stories about that. Either way, they cooked her body parts. That is one consistent thing with all the research I did, that they did cook her body parts to stop it from decomposing and smelling. And some of the other body parts they were put in a bag and put in the garbage waste. So when Anna Fong went to the police in 1999 and they listened to her eventually, they did go and search the apartment that this all took place in. Now it says a lot of it, a lot of things had gone, but there were quite a few things left over that they found. And I can't even believe I'm saying this, but one of the things that they found was her skull in a Hello Kitty, like I'll insert it here. Hello Kitty Mermaid. 
and they'd sewn it in. They'd actually, so when they cut her head off, they'd actually sewn it inside the Hello Kitty teddy. That's one of the things they found, and they said it was that decomposed that there was one tooth that was also found with it, so they could clarify it's her with dental records. So then, along with finding that in the teddy, upstairs, there was another, like, a bin liner, a bag, and that was full of some inside organs of hers as well. So the police are like, this actually definitely happened. So all three men got arrested. It was a six-week-long trial, and they didn't get arrested for murder or convicted for murder, should I say. They got convicted of manslaughter. So they didn't mean to kill her. No, I think they did mean to kill her. But anyway, they've got convicted. But they've got convicted for manslaughter. They also got convicted for not letting Fran have a lawful burial, which is actually an offence in Hong Kong. So they got convicted for that too. Now, the girl, on the other hand, Ah Fong, was given full immunity and protection if she went up against the three guys um, from the triad gang. So she got away with just nothing, but she did give as much as she could do to get these guys sent down. So in December of 2000, they were convicted of manslaughter and were sent to 20 years in prison with the possibility of parole at 20 years after serving the time. So that's actually scary to know that they have allowed out now. This is 2020 and they could be released now. So also after all this had happened, the apartment block had then become famous in the world of spiritual people. So people actually start going and visiting it, saying Fran's um, spirit's there, it's been haunted by her. And because it caused so much controversy and trouble and things like that, the apartment block was eventually demolished. I feel like something like that and it would be completely turned out in England straight away. But anyway, it took its cars and it got demolished. And that is more or less the ending to the Hello Kitty. So that was the case of the Hello Kitty in Hong Kong. It's quite a popular one and a very gruesome one. So like I say, I apologise that that's my first true crime video. But I thought, what way to go in then, jumping straight in at some good gruesome stuff. Um, so like I say, this is a new thing I'm doing, true crimes and story times. And if you like it, please do let me know because this is literally what I would love doing. Um, just researching true crimes, some unsolved murders, some solved murders. Let me know some that you might think I could go over and I'd love to do it for you. Um, if you liked this video, please do like and subscribe because it really does mean the world to me. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.